Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Moving from close quarter combat to beyond visual range engagements, dogfighting has come a long way. The advent of novel technologies has leveled up dogfighting to a level where guided missiles and radar systems dominate warfare. Today's episode will take you through an adrenaline-fueled journey, unleashing all the tactics of air combat maneuvering. As the name suggests, basic flight maneuvers are a set of tactical movements that put a fighter in a better position against an opponent during an aerial engagement. Basic flight maneuvers consist of climbs, descents, turns, and other simple maneuvers that every aircraft can perform effortlessly. Depending on the abilities of the fighter aircraft and pilot, these basic flight maneuvers are crafted into complex maneuvers. Every pilot lays a sound foundation in basic flight maneuvers during initial training sessions to comprehend the abilities of the aircraft he flies. This factor plays the most crucial role during air combat maneuvering. Understanding the characteristics of one's aircraft allows the pilot to exploit its strengths and use such experience to outmaneuver the opponent to gain a better firing position. The advent of thrust vectoring into the world of air combat maneuvering redefined the possibilities of fighters. During a dogfight, the attacker should move its fighter to the desired position before the opponent to gain a comfortable firing position. This can't be done effectively with the flight controls alone. With that said, thrust vectoring kicks in, introducing higher roll and pitch rates. Thrust vectoring could be seen as another set of flight controls, as it makes a fighter super maneuverable by infusing more agility. The exhaust nozzle of the engine directs the engine exhaust to vector engine thrust. In a two-dimensional thrust vectoring engine, the nozzle moves up and down, altering the pitching attitude of the aircraft. Thrust vectoring makes a fighter capable of operating at extreme angles of attack and low speeds without losing control. Maneuvers such as the high alpha loop, Pugachev's Cobra, and the J-turn are examples of demanding maneuvers that require thrust vectoring. A fighter without thrust vectoring could not attain such maneuvers with the help of flight controls, as the control surfaces become ineffective due to airflow separation at high angles of attack. While engines could deliver thrust regardless of the aircraft's angle of attack, engine thrust is utilized to maneuver the plane by vectoring it in the required direction. So the pilot could maintain control authority even when the wings of the fighter are stalled or the fighter is operating in a post-stall regime. The pilot does not control the vectoring nozzle directly, but the flight control computers do so to facilitate the demands set by the pilot's inputs. On the other hand, when flying at high altitudes, thin air could drastically reduce the control surface response. Thrust vectoring could regain the lost effectiveness and maintain the maneuverability of the fighter even at higher altitudes.
Training to dogfight is no easy task for pilots, as no one can define the scope of the training. The level of training and experience required to outmaneuver an opponent vastly depends on a plethora of factors. A pilot cannot employ the same set of primary flight maneuvers for all opponents that were successful in one setting. It is a case-by-case -case scenario, and the pilot should decide by comprehending the situation, his own abilities, and the nature of the opponent before making the game plan. To begin with dogfight training, Pilots fly with colleagues in the same aircraft type. This helps them understand their own abilities and gain better experience maintaining situational awareness. Dissimilar air combat training is the next level, where pilots fly with different aircraft types. This creates a real-world opportunity for the pilots to experience a fully-fledged dogfight scenario. During dissimilar air combat training, pilots are given the additional task of comprehending the abilities of the opponent. Reading the opponent correctly helps the pilot quickly reach a favorable position during the dogfight. Apart from honing dogfighting skills, pilots practice flying in canyons, which requires extreme levels of attention and precision. The main advantage of canyon flights is that a pilot can sneak under the radar when flying through the opening of the canyon. Flying through a canyon is such a demanding task that a pilot must demonstrate proficiency in low-level navigation and can find space maneuvering. Despite the high degree of risk associated with an aerial engagement, it can paint the sky with an awe-inspiring dance. To offer an opportunity for the public to experience the true power and precision of these fighters, the U.S. Air Force Air Demonstration Squadron, or Thunderbirds, conducts air shows across the country. Thunderbirds fly the multi-role fighter F-16 Fighting Falcon, a true sign of agility and power. Usually, six fighters take part in an air show, demonstrating demanding maneuvers. Just like the Thunderbirds, the Blue Angels are the demonstration squadron of the U.S. Navy. Squadron, Hudson, Hut! Forward, march! Both squadrons showcase the professionalism and exceptional skills of military aviators. The Blue Angels are also a group of six fighters, but they fly F-A-18 Super Hornets. They fly exceptionally close, as close as 18 inches apart and take the spectators through a jaw-dropping aerial ballet. During certain maneuvers, such as the double farvel and sneak pass, fighters are flown at low altitudes and extremely close to the ground. The immense power from the engines and the perturbation of the air by the fighter could immerse spectators in awe and excitement.
Airspeed's as slow as 120 miles an hour with the section high alpha pass, as fast as 700 miles per hour for the sneak pass of uh, numbers five and six. And uh, the Diamond is gonna get as close as 18 inches apart uh, during their Diamond 360 maneuver. During air shows in urban areas, Blue Angels have to fly above high-rise buildings. This creates a mesmerizing view for the spectators due to the close proximity of the fighters to the high-rise structures. Pilots always maintain a safe distance from buildings, as getting too close could damage the building due to jet exhaust. Hence, Blue Angels pilots fly close enough to amaze the spectators, but not too close to damage the building and put themselves in trouble. In addition to the usual air shows, these fascinating machines are used to set the climax for the most prominent sporting event in the United States. It's a pre-game tradition to embellish the inception of the Super Bowl with an array of low passes by various military aircraft. The flyover showcases American air power and inspires young generations to pursue a career in the U.S. military. This sports tradition holds a significant cultural importance and empowers patriotism within the people. A Super Bowl flyover requires months of planning and coordination. The airplanes taking part in the flyover are moved to closer airports or Air Force bases where they can take off at the right time. Flying low passes are nothing new to the Thunderbirds or Blue Angels. But this story is quite different when it comes to high altitude bombers like the B-1B Lancer or B-52 Stratofortress. There are occasions when such colossal birds happen to fly low passes to fulfill specific mission demands. Flying close to the ground with a hefty bomber is challenging due to the fact that the aircraft is not as agile as a fighter. Pilots take extra precautions when flying extremely close to the ground, as the slightest mistake could jeopardize their safety. Regardless of the fact that the B-1B Lancer is a high-altitude strategic bomber, the aircraft can be flown at low altitudes more efficiently thanks to its variable geometry wings. The bomber uses aft-wing sweep settings for low-altitude flights. When the bone was designed, it was designed to be a penetrator. The aircraft is fitted with two structural mode control vanes, or canard surfaces, in the forward fuselage to tackle aerodynamic buffeting at low-level, high-speed flights. These vanes are part of the structural mode control system, which is dedicated to controlling adverse structural loads. It operates without any pilot intervention. While the bone was designed keeping its low-level missions in mind, the B-52 was intended solely to be a high-altitude strategic bomber. However, the advancement of adversary radars mandates low-level flights of the B-52 to penetrate enemy airspace. The B-52's terrain avoidance radar helps pilots with an electronically generated image of the terrain during its low-level sorties. Whether a super maneuverable fighter jet or a hefty bomber, maneuvering the aircraft under demanding conditions is always challenging. While the advent of cutting edge technology has redefined how pilots dogfight and maneuver their aircraft, it will always create mesmerizing scenes that never get old. That's the end of this video. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.